Welcome back to Tavasoli's Electrical Training Channel. Before we start this lesson, I want you to do me a favor and press subscribe and like buttons so we can rank higher on YouTube and be able to make more free videos available. Thank you very much. Let's get to this lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to program Allen Bradley PLCs. This type of Allen Bradley I'm using is SLC 500 and the simulation software that I use is purely a simulation software uh, we're not actually download when we talk about downloading we're not actually downloading it to the PLC it's a simulation but you do you, you follow the same principle as if you had had it connected to um, an actual PLC let's get to it okay let's program this silo simulation <coughs> open your logic Pro again we're just waiting for it to load and we go to simulation and tick silo simulator we drag this so you can see the whole system the graphics of the system and um, let's see if we can program this right first thing we want is we want to have a start and stop button now we did it a little bit differently for that smaller program of shutter door the door simulation and I mentioned that in passing there that it's best practice if you use internal latch relays to start and stop the whole system. If I hover over a stop, you can see it's a normally closed push button. Start is a normally open push button. Now I need a coil to begin with. Last time we started with the output and when we went back to the start and did it that way. I'm just going to do it a little bit differently to, to the, this, this time. Um, so we put a coil here and this coil we choose that as an internal read well sorry I have to actually pick a latch output so I pick that latch and I bring it here this is a latch latching internal latch relay and we name this output let's say output 26 because I know we, we're not going to have too many outputs here we'll have one output for the motor one output for, for the valve so that's two and we have three outputs here that's five so that's why I put output 26 here <clears throat> you could choose anything as long as it's, it's, it's within the range of the existing outputs in your PLC, uh, either the real output relay, uh, the real outputs, or internal uh, relays. If they're internal relays, you still have to look at the manual of your PLC to see if that actually exists. Uh, you can't just name something that doesn't exist; it won't work. So we name that, and then we put an instruction there so people know what that is. That's an internal relay and we know it's a latch because it says L and with this we use the start button uh, you have to go from here to use the contact and put it there and we name this start PB push button so what we've done here with this type of Al with this type of PLC, which is the Allen Bradley SLC 500, when you have a latch, you have to have an on latch button, and they have to be on at the same time for it to run. And when you want to on latch it, the on latch coil has to be de-energized. So it seems like on latch and latch are energized at the same time. That is 
but that's how the program works with this type of PLCs. Mitsubishi would be different and other, other PLCs, other systems are different, but this type you need um, a latch and an unlatch at the same time. So uh, add another line, the line went on top, so we can drag this line or drag this line here and say here we need a stop button. Now the stop button or the push button for the stop is the push button itself is normally closed as it says here normally closed push button. So I'm going to use a normally closed push button here and connect that to an unlatch coil or internal relay and that has to be the same output as this. So this unlatches that. So this will be output again to 6. It won't be a different one. It will be the same thing. So this unlatches that when it's pressed, when it's de-energized. So this one should be well, let's put the contact there. This is the stop button. So that's that and then name it That's our latching and unlatching. Let's see. Let's, let me just see if we can show you how what that means. Uh, we download that and run it. So what that means is when you start this, as you see, by just pressing this once, this is latched. It's kept itself. Instead of having an output and occupying a physical output on the PLC and using the contact here to latch, it's just you just use an internal latch and you're not wasting another output on the output of the, the physical card the output card of the plc and like i said with this type of plc uh, alan bradley these two come on at the same time and when you press this one with de-energize that it'll de-energize this on latch will be de-energized and that will de-energize that as you see stop it should be energized so start stop so that's the, that's the first part you have to do <clears throat> we go to back to programming and this time now i need another wrong for my motor for my conveyor so here I put a physical output and put this output there and name it um, conveyor mode and that's that and that can that should be run as soon as you press this so you once it's pressed and, and it's on the basically you press the start button this is on this should run this so we need a contact here so this should be on this side so we use this contact internal relay output as an input contact for running the conveyor But once we start this, this will continuously run. It won't stop. What we want to do is, when it gets to this I13 sensor proximity switch, as soon as it sees the edge of the box, we want to, to stop the conveyor. So we need a uh, normally close contact of this input here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a normally close contact here in the right logical order and drag this input and put it there you can just type it doesn't make any difference and then type the description of it this is prox sensor now 
Now, what happens is the, the, the conveyor will run as soon as you start the button, but when it gets to this, it'll stop. It'll stop the conveyor, which is what we want. But at the same time, when this is running, while this is running, we want this run indicator to indicate as well. So we add another wrong of program, and we put a physical output there. Physical output here. We can use that later. It's just created two lines by mistake, but we can use that later. Um, so we use this as output to two for your indicator to say this is running. And whilst activating this or energizing that is another normally open contact of this output. So this output, we use this output, a normally open contact of this output as an input for this wrong. So let's put this line here, this here, and we use and we use this, we can use that. The same thing. That's the same thing, we just put that there for simplicity. We drag it there, so that will indicate the indicator will come on. And we said when it gets to this, and this is sensing, uh, it stops the conveyor. The sensor is on, the conveyor is off. At that moment, it has to open this valve. So we need another coil here for that valve. An output. Uh, physical output, oh, I'd already put it there, sorry. So the physical output is there for this solenoid valve to open the nozzle of this hopper so it can drop the products. So when is that activated or energized? It's only when you have I want three true. So I want three is true. Like that means the box is over here and this is sensing the box. And also the conveyor has stopped because if you just put this there, when the conveyor is moving, the sensor is always sensing the box all the time. All, during all this time, this will be on all the time. We don't want that. We want it on, not while the box is running or the conveyor is running. Only when the conveyor is stopped and this is sensing it. So it's stopped and not here, not here. Only when it's in the right place and the conveyor is stopped in the right place and the indicator is saying that it is actually there. So you need to fulfill two conditions. One is to stop the conveyor and second is this sensor has to sense the box just above it. If the sensor senses the box and the conveyor is running, it shouldn't open this. If the conveyor is stopped but this doesn't sense the box, then it shouldn't open the valve. We have to have two conditions met before we energize this output, which is for the solenoid valve to open. <coughs> so I've done, I've done one of them. The other one is to put another contact, uh, normally close contact of the motor. So I put a normally close contact. Uh, I'd like to put it this side. And that should be the motor. The normally close contact of the motor. When it's not running and this sensor is sensing it, then it gives an output and give, that output will open the valve. The valve is open. This will drop the product into the box. And then once it's full, this sensor will come. It will come on. And that will uh, start the conveyor again. So how do we do that? Uh, so the next thing is, and the wrong program here. 
I want four a normally open contact of I want four is activated. When this is activated, this is on, so we need this condition. While this is getting filled, the motor is off. And once it's full, the motor is still off. Now we need to say this is off, this is on, this is come on because it's say it's saying that the box is full, the container is full of product, and the motor is off. So normally close contact of the motor. Then that should give me a coil. I'm using an output. I'm using a latch, internal latch. Sorry, it's, it's got the wrong place. Delete that one. Let's say internal latch here. Again, just imagine that's an output. But we don't want to occupy and waste the limited number of outputs that you might have on your PLC. So we name this output to 5. Now we'll use this further in the line in the program I'll tell you how. So we use this one because once it's activated, this is an inter another internal relay, just once a box on container is full and the conveyor has stopped, then we need to start the conveyor. Uh, so we need to basically use this relay and bypass this sense, this line to start the conveyor. What's stopping this conveyor from running at that moment is not output 26 because output 26 is just a run and it's latched. As soon as you start the start button, it's latched and it's going to be on. It's this proximity switch. When it's there, it's bypassed it and it's cut the circuit so the motor stops. Now. We need to start it again, so we need to bypass this. So, um, going back to the sequence, the sequence was it gets filled once it's as soon as it's full and the conveyor is still shot. We need to start the conveyor. Going back to the conveyor motor, we need to bypass this so it can run. So we come back here, put one of these coils here, um, contacts there. Sorry, the, the parallel connection there, and put another contact here, here in parallel with it, and use this latch there. And I'll start the conveyor all over again. This, when we started the program, we said when you have a latch, you have to have an on latch. The same applies here. You have a latch here, you have to have an on latch. What on latch is this is I13. Once it's past I13, once the box is past I13 and the sensor doesn't see any box here anymore, it has to unlatch that. So this is unlatched. So the conveyor doesn't keep continuing continuously going even when it gets to because this this way if we don't unlatch it it'll run one cycle the, the second cycle it just continues it won't stop here it'll just keep going because the path is open this is going to be energized and this is constantly energized so the conveyor is just going to const constantly go it won't stop so we have to deactivate this so we'll go back to the normal position and this i13 will stop the conveyor no, as normal. So we need to use normally closed contact of Y13 also in another wrong. I13 to energize the unlatch U of output 2.5 yes and that should work and um, 
one thing we've missed, I think we didn't do the indication, we didn't program the indication for fill two, three. When we are filling the indicator, when, when we are filling and the valve is open, output two, one is open, that should also give you a signal to give another output for the indicator. So we can now program those two, say another line of program and in this line or in this wrong we'll say the output to one which we haven't named output to one we have to name that solenoid valve use the normally open contact of this here so normally open contact oh sorry I shouldn't it should be here and I drag this output to this as an input for this wrong solenoid valve it should give you an indicator an output again it's gone to the wrong place it comes here and we name this fill. So it's indicating fill. Now we name it fill. This indicator 2 2 was wrong. We didn't name that as wrong as fill. And we need another line. Another line of program or another wrong of program, another program to say when it's full, which is this indicator, normally open contact and a coil. Normally open contact should be I14 and the coil should be your output for full. Now let's see if this program is flawless. Download it and run it. Start. It is going too fast. We reduce the speed or scan scan time. It gets there, stops there, gets filled, and moves on and goes back to. And the indicators are working appropriately as they're supposed to do. And ne there's a next part, there is a second part to this program and that's this switch A, B, C, select the switch uh, which is your input I15, I16 and I17. Uh, one of them is fully automated, the other one is semi-automated and the other one is uh, bypass. So I want you to have a think about that one to add this switch on your own. Uh, I won't show you any answers for that one. And you need to program that one yourself separately and find out if your program is working. If you have any questions or suggestions, again, I would be very happy to uh, answer your questions and hear your su suggestions and uh, we'll try to do our best to make better videos. Thank you very much and see you again next time with another electronic or electrical training lesson. Goodbye. Right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you learned something. How did it go for you? Let me know. Put a comment there and ask any questions you have I'll get back to you as soon as I can and it will be me answering your questions directly it won't be my secretary or anybody else and don't forget to subscribe and share this video I'll see you next time with another electrical or electronic training video till then goodbye